ఈజ్ రామలింగ ప్రసాద్ కుప్ప వెల్కమ్ టు మై ఛానల్ ఫార్మా వరల్డ్ టుడేస్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ హ్యాండ్లింగ్ ఆఫ్ రిఫరెన్స్ స్టాండర్డ్స్ ఇన్ ది క్యూసి ల్యాబొరేటరీ లెట్ ఎస్ సీ ది రిక్వైర్మెంట్ సెక్షన్ లెవెన్ పాయింట్ సెవెంటీన్ ఆఫ్ ఐసిహెచ్ క్యూ సెవెన్ ప్రిస్క్రైబ్స్ ప్రైమరీ రిఫరెన్స్ స్టాండర్డ్స్ should be obtained as appropriate for the manufacture of APIs. The source of each primary reference standard should be documented. Records should be maintained of each primary reference standard's storage and usage in accordance with the supplier's recommendations. It is necessary to have primary standards in QC laboratory for testing and release of materials during manufacturing. The source of such standards has to be documented fully. The sources generally are from USP or EP. They supply the primary standards as current reference standards CRS. these primary standards are identified with a specific lot number you have to go to the respective official website and download the certificate of analysis document this information along with the certificate of analysis the primary standard gets replaced with fresh lots there should be a detailed procedure in your sop on handling of primary standards the procedure should describe how frequently the respective website is checked to find out if there is a change in the lot number it is necessary to replace the old standard with a new one whenever there is a new lot available read the usage instructions carefully before using the primary standards appropriate storage conditions have to be followed as recommended by the supplier some standards may have to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees celsius or 25 degrees celsius or in a different temperature conditions there are certain standards which are hygroscopic and need to be protected from accidental ingress of traces of water unless such standards are stored well protected in a desiccator with active desiccant it can lose its potency so it is very important to adhere to the storage conditions as recommended primary reference standards obtained from an officially recognized source are normally used without testing if stored under conditions consistent with the supplier's recommendations the official standards are already qualified at source hence it is not required to test once again they are well elucidated for chemical structure impurities and purity established fully at the source however those sources may not provide us such data for our records it will be archived at the source site also the standards will not give complete analytical data on the standard it gives only information on potency or levels of impurities etc it's also important that they are stored as recommended to avoid any deterioration section 11.18 prescribes where a primary reference standard is not available from an officially recognized source an in-house primary standard should be established appropriate testing should be performed to establish fully the identity and purity of the primary reference standard appropriate documentation of this testing should be maintained this section is important when there is no primary standard available from any of the official sites it is necessary to have an in-house primary standard prepared let us understand what is a primary standard it is a fully characterized and qualified substance the characterization 
of a chemical compound is established for its chemical structure, how the functional groups are arranged, its molecular weight, uh, information on elements like carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, etc. With this step, the identity of the compound is established. What is qualification? The qualification of a compound is established for its purity, levels of impurities, all these testing details to establish the identity and purity of the compound have to be documented completely. Section 11.19 prescribes secondary reference standards should be appropriately prepared, identified, tested, approved and stored. The suitability of each batch of secondary reference standard should be determined prior to use by comparing against the primary reference standard. Each batch of secondary reference standard should be periodically requalified in accordance with a written protocol. Section 11.19 talks about secondary standards. Secondary standard is an alternative standard for primary standard. There should be a detailed procedure for preparation of the secondary standard. If necessary, the available material may be reprocessed to make it qualify as a standard. The secondary standard prepared should be evaluated against the primary reference standard. This secondary standard may be used for routine analysis. The secondary standard has to be requalified using the CRS with a frequency. It may be once in a year. Detailed protocol should be made with the identification of the source material, any reprocessing for purifying the meat to meet the standard quality, etc. have to be part of the protocol. Let us see how the other standards are handled. Section 11.16 prescribes the agents and standard solutions should be prepared and labeled following written procedures. Use by dates should be applied as appropriate for analytical reagents or standard solutions. This is another important section. Handling of reagents and standard solutions have to be described in detail in the SOP. There is a requirement to indicate the use by date. That means the expiry date of the reagent. How do we handle this? If it is a standard solution or a volumetric solution, the solutions are evaluated with a definite frequency like once a week or so and confirm that the strength of the stated standard is within the acceptance criteria. The acceptance criteria for such solutions should be decided. General thumb rule is that the strength should be within 10% of the prescribed strength always. For example, for a 1.0 normal volumetric solution, the strength should not vary more than 10% on either side. That means one normal solution can vary between 1.1 on higher side and 0.9 on the lower side. 0.1 is 10% of 1. So the SOP should describe this requirement. In the same example as above, carry out the standardization every week. If the normality varies beyond 1.1 to 0.9 after 4 weeks, as say in the shelf life, or use before date for that particular volumetric solution as 3 weeks because up to 3 weeks the normality was within 1.1 and 0.9. So the stability of the volumetric solution is only 3 weeks. This is much simpler approach. Consider the same approach for all, for all volumetric solutions and assign the use by dates accordingly. Record all these details fully. Coming back to the reagents, 
it is recommended to use the supplier's recommendation as given on the label. If it is not a part of the label, you may have to get the data from the supplier's database. You cannot give some arbitrary date. There is another way also. The use by date may be assigned a minimum of one year. Again, it is assumed that it is okay within one year. A suitability test of the reagent could be done after the use by date. A simple test to establish the suitability could be, for example, if you have phenolphthalein indicator, prepare a solution and check with sodium hydroxide solution and confirm if the indicator is responding to give a pink color. It is a suitability test. Similarly, you can have different types of methods to establish the suitability. Use appropriate methods for standardization as per any official compendia. You can use any other standardization procedure as far as it gives at least the same degree of accuracy as the method described in the compendia like USP, EP or IP. It is recommended to carry out the standardization in triplicate. Three is the minimum number required for statistical evaluation. Material safety data sheets, MSDS for critical, sensitive and toxic reagents should be handy while handling. This is required to get complete knowledge about the chemical that is being handled in the laboratory. Necessary PPEs have to be used while handling the reagents or standard solutions. Use always rubber bulbs to pipette out any volumetric or standard solution. Never pipette out with mouth. This is very dangerous practice. Let us discuss on storage of reagents and standard solutions. Classify the reagents as liquids and solids basically. This classification helps for storage strategy. All liquids should be stored on the lower side cupboards with additional synthetic plastic trays which work like dike. A dike is a barrier to hold back any accidental leakage of the liquid. The leakage to the liquid will be collected in the tray to avoid any further seepage. Classify further as flammable, non-flammable, toxic, volatile, acidic, basic, broadly. It is recommended to store these classes separately. Volatile liquids and flammable liquids may be stored under ventilated areas. Incompatible acidic and alkaline materials should be stored separately. For example, never store ammonia and hydrochloric acid in the same place. Entire area will be filled with fumes even if there is a very minor leak of either of the chemicals. Classify the volumetric solutions as light sensitive, light resistant container compatibility broadly. You have to be very careful while storing volumetric solutions like potassium permanganate, iodine, perchloric acid solutions. They have to be stored in low actinic bottle that means amber colored bottles they are light sensitive solutions if stored in clear bottles the strength will drop drastically similarly you should never store a normal solution of sodium hydroxide in a glass bottle you have to use a htp bottle list out all the reagents as per the classification make separate list for all these. Assign adequate space for storage and easy retrieval. Adequate space is required to avoid any accidental breakage while taking the reagent bottle from the storage rack. Let us see the other controls. A detailed inventory should be maintained 
a register with the details of name of the reagent, issued quantity, available stock should be available. This is required to avoid any sudden shortage of the reagents. Necessary firefighting arrangements like fire extinguishers should be in place for handling of any accidents. Since there are large number of various types of chemicals stored, in case of any accidental happenings, this system is required as a precautionary action. Entry restrictions are also recommended. This system also recommended as an overview control on the movement of the persons in and out. I hope that this information on handling of primary standards, secondary standards, reagents and volumetric solutions is adequately understood. Draft a detailed procedure or a system to incorporate all these features. If you already have a procedure, review and confirm whether or not these aspects are included. If not, revise if necessary. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.